Okay, welcome to this video looking at the compute if absent method on the Java map interface. Um, so we'll go through it, but just before we do, let's have a quick look at the actual method signature itself. So the method signature exists on the map interface. Map is an interface. Okay, implemented by various map implementations such as hash map, tree map, etc. etc. Okay, so if we look at the signature, it looks fairly complex, but fear not, we will go through it. So let's have a look. Okay, so the map signature kind of looks like that. It's got some sort of slightly more extended generics, but I've simplified it here by just putting K and V. These are actually slightly more complicated. In fact, let's just copy the original value so we can see them side by side. Okay, so, so it normally looks like that, and I've simplified it to that. So I've got rid of the question mark super and the question mark extends just to make it easier to read. So now let's have a look. Firstly, it's a default method. We'll cover what that means in a second. Secondly, it returns a value. So it's not a, a method that just goes away and does something. It actually returns a value, okay, which is the new computed value or the existing value if the mapping function didn't execute. We'll go into more detail on that in a minute. Um, and the key of the map. So maps have keys and values, key value pairs, and this is the key. And then we have a function which takes a K of type K, which is the key, a new key, possibly an existing key. That's, and it returns a V, which is the value. Okay. So it takes a key and returns a value. Now the function here can use the key or it can ignore the key and just return some sort of hard coded value. That's technically fine. Okay, um, so let's just have a quick look at what default methods are. Default methods are methods that are added to interfaces in Java. They're instance type methods, so they're not static and they can be inherited. They can be overridden by implementation. So tree map could implement a slightly different compute if absent to hash map and concurrent hash map could implement a different one again. They're available to all instances. They have a default implementation inside the map interface, hence the name default, the keyword default. Okay, and they're not static. So what's a function? So the second part here, the second argument here is a function. Now a function can be thought of as a piece of code that you can pass around. So traditionally you pass variables and values down to methods in Java. Now you can actually pass pieces of code as it were in a kind of an elegant way. You could do it before, but it's much more elegant to do it with functions. And a function in particular is a piece of code that takes a value and returns you a different value, right? So you might pass in a string and get an integer. You might pass in, if you think of a factory analogy, you might pass raw materials in at one end and get manufactured products out of the other end. Okay, so it just maps something, hence the name mapping function. Okay. So that's that. So now let's look at an example and some actual code. So we've got a map here that adds a key value pair of one and one, and it's of type hash map. Uh, it's two integers, key and value are both integer. Okay, now if we take that map and we say compute if absent two, and then k to k plus two, what this is doing is, this is saying, well, go and have a look if there's a key in the map of the key two, and if it has a value, then don't do anything. But if it doesn't have a value, then take the key, which is two, and add two to it, right? So the answer will be four, and then it returns the up-to-date value. So let's print that as well. Okay, and let's just call this method. Now let's run that and see what happens. Okay, you can see that it prints one and one, which is the first value that we put in, and it prints two and four, which is the key two, and this compute function returns four, and it also returns the up-to-date value, which is four. Okay, so that gets printed out. Okay, so that's nice and simple. So let's just quickly go through that. So we could say, well, why not just use put? Um, well, the reason not to use put is that put will replace a value if it's already there, right? So if there was already a key there with the value two and say a value 100, it would get overwritten with two and value four. We might not want to do that. We might only want to put something in the map if it doesn't already exist. The other thing is that this returns a computed value. So we can pass in a function to compute the value. You can't do that with put. You have to actually pass a value in. Okay, that value could be a function, but the function won't execute. So this means that we can pass in a piece of code to compute the value. And also this returns the up-to-date computed value. So that's quite useful. So now let's go and have a look at why we can't use put if absent, which is a kind of similar method. So we've got compute if absent. Why can't we use put if absent? 
Well, the interesting thing to note about put if absent is that firstly, it doesn't take a function as an argument. So if you've got something complex you want to work out in Java, functions are lazy. They're lazily evaluated as and when you need them. Whereas this is an actual value. If you put a piece of code in there, that value will get computed. Okay. Whereas we only really want to do something if we actually need to generate it, not just at the call site. Okay. And put if absent, the other big difference is that it returns the old value. Now we may want to generate a value, get the value back and operate on that value. But in, in put if absent, you get the old value back, right? So that doesn't really facilitate lots of the things that we're going to look at in the next few sections, which are very useful, but we can't do that if we use put if absent. Okay, so one of the use cases for this function is if you want to construct a new object. So we've got an example here. We're constructing a new integer. Because it takes a function, we can use the method reference syntax. So this is very, this is basically equivalent of doing something like this. Okay, so these two are equivalent, but maybe the one at the top is maybe slightly easier to read, depending on how you feel about it. So looking at this, you might be thinking, well, what does the actual function take? Now this function takes the key. Okay, so it takes a parameter. That parameter is passed invisibly in here because the signature is K and V. It takes a K and returns a V. Okay, so in this case, integer.value of takes an integer, which is two and it returns a value, which is also two. Okay, so this compute if absent allows us to construct a new variable. So you might have other things here, for example, employee dot colon colon new. You might have some other kind of construction going on, but this is a convenient way of passing that in, okay? And this object only gets constructed if it needs to construct it, okay? So again, it's lazy. That's one of the benefits we have over put. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at one of the other use cases, which is where you have a multi-valued map. So sometimes you have a map which has a single value, like here you've got a map, integer and integer, uh, integer key and integer value. But sometimes you have a map which for each key, you might want multiple values. And in that case, you can use a nested data structure, something like this. So you've got a map where the key is an integer, but the value is an entirely new map. So each entry in the map, each key value pair has a key, which is the integer, and each one has a, its own value, which is a new separate map. So if you've got 100 entries in, in this map, you might have 100 map values, so new maps, okay? So lots and lots of maps. Now, in this scenario, if we wanted to add a new map entry if it doesn't already exist and add a value to it if it does exist, we would have to do something like this before computer if absent was around. Okay. So we create a new map, which is the value. We add a value to it because it's the first time we're using it. We want to get the value in there. And then we do map.put one and then the value. And the value in this case is a new map. Okay. Slightly clumsy, slightly clunky. Now we have a new convenient way of doing it. So you can use m.compute if absent, pass in the key that you want and say new hash map. Now this method here, will return the value that's been generated, right? So this map has been generated. If there's already a map value inside the map for this key, that will get returned. If you generate a new one, like we've done in this case, because this value doesn't exist in this map, we already know that, then it will return this map here. When this map is returned, you can in the same line of code, add the value to it. So it's kind of a very succinct way of, of generating that. And obviously, this constructor here is going to get past the key. So what value is this getting passed? Let's have a look. If we click there, we can see that it takes the initial capacity. So that just happens to be quite convenient that hash map takes an integer and that integer can be the initial capacity. Now, if you didn't want a hash map with the initial capacity, you could also do something like this. You could say, okay, and then say new hash map and ignore that initial value. Okay, you don't actually need to use it, but you can if you want to, so you can pass it here. But beware that in this case, it is getting passed in, and in this case, it's not, okay? Okay, and so next thing we're gonna have a look at is memoization. Now, memoizing is a concept, when I think of it, I think of it from a functional programming perspective, where you have a function that is deterministic, meaning that every time you pass it certain values, it always returns the same value for those values. Okay, so it's it's deterministic. You can always be sure that it's if you passed it, you know, one and two, and it's an add function, it's going to return three. If you call it a thousand times with one and two, you know that it will keep returning three. Okay, so 
in those cases, many of those functional languages can memoize a function. What that means is that they can effectively remember once it's computed once, they know that for those given keys, uh, those given values, uh, it will always generate a particular value. Okay, so it doesn't need to go and then do that computation again. Now in Java, we don't have an inbuilt function like that, but we might also want to reuse some values. Now imagine we have a map with integer key and integer value and we have a kind of complex value that we want to generate and then fetch it. So multiple times you might be calling this method to fetch this value, okay? So what we want to say is compute the value if it's absent, but if it's already there and it's already been computed, then just return the value. We don't want to do it again and again. So if I pass this, for example, you know, if I had a method argument here that took a value, int i, I could pass that i here, okay? And then this would multiply it by 21, store it, the second time I call this method with that same value, it won't recompute the value. It will just fetch it because it already exists. So it will only compute if it's absent, okay, as the name suggests, and then return that value to you. Okay, so hopefully you think that's useful, the memoization function. It's generally not useful if the computation you're doing is super fast. It's actually possibly faster than actually fetching it from the cache. So this is generally useful for difficult or complex to calculate calculations or expensive calculations that require a lot of CPU or memory usage, okay? Um, but that's kind of an interesting pattern that may be useful to you. Okay, now we'll have a look at some of the exceptions that can be thrown from this method. So you can get a null pointer exception if the specified key is null and the map doesn't support null keys or the mapping function is null. Unsupported operation exception if the put operation is not supported by this map. So you could think of an immutable map, any kind of immutable map. If you try and call compute if absent, obviously it's going to return an exception because it's not meant to be mutated. And this function tries to compute a value and assign it to the map. You can get a class cast exception if the value is not one that should be stored in this map. So if you imagine that you've implemented a map yourself and you've determined that the only types that can be assigned there are string and integer, for example, anything else is not relevant to that type of map. You could throw a class cast exception. An illegal argument exception, uh, again, if the specified key or value prevents it from being stored in the map. So imagine a case where you've implemented the map and you only want to allow a certain range of values. So you allow numbers, uh, but they can't be less than 20 or more than 60 because that just doesn't make sense for your use case. You could throw an illegal argument exception. Now, the last one is interesting, concurrent modification exception. Now, this isn't declared in the default implementation, which is in the map interface, this one here but it is declared by hash map, which is the actual implementation that we're using because that's the underlying object that you're, where we're using in our examples. And it should be therefore all non-concurrent maps. So if you're implementing a non-concurrent map, you should probably throw a concurrent modification exception if somebody tries to modify the map in the middle of their mapping function. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. We have a map here, just a simple map, which is a hash map, which does throw a concurrent modification exception. And then we say m.compute if absent, and we say for the key one, take the key, but then ignore the key and just do a map.put. So we're modifying the map in the function, okay? Now, we're not modifying it in the way that we're allowed to modify by just generating a key, but in the actual function code, so you can look at this another way, we can put it in these kind of curly braces, and you can just pretty much execute whatever code you want here. Now, when you execute this code, you can also do things like this, which is to directly manipulate the map. Now that's not allowed, okay? So we should, all being well, we should get an exception if we try and do that. And let's just run that, let's see what happens. Okay, so yeah, we get a concurrent modification exception on this line of code here. Okay, so basically, long, long story short, don't do this. Don't manipulate the map uh, inside the mapping function. Okay, and that pretty much sums up looking at the compute if absent method. I hope that was useful.